Today is March 61st. We've been here a long time. Boy, am I tired. No, no, I'm kidding. It's the 19th. It's March 19th. Ah, let's see what I can do with this. 19, that's a, that is a tricky one. How can I make that 19 into something interesting? Bird day, a little favorite bird. Welcome to Lunch Doodles on March 19th. I hope everybody is doing well. I have some exciting stuff to share with you today, something a little bit different. Not exactly illustration, it's actually toilet paper roll. I bet you're gonna be seeing a lot of these in the future and maybe even some of these, which are bigger, and then maybe you'll even get one of these, which is uh, for an enormous toilet. It's probably the largest toilet you could ever imagine. And these look like they're just pieces of cardboard, but they are actually art tools. They are actually things that I can make art out of. And I'm going to put them back. We're going to take them in a little while and play with them again. But I'll give you an example. I made this book that just happens to be right here called The Nets Baguette. And in The Nets Baguette, Nanette lives in a city, and there is a fountain and goes to a bakery. And that fountain right there, that little picture of the fountain, that's a toilet paper roll. So I actually made this entire city, let's see if I get another image where we really see the city. There we go, there it is in the rain. I built this city. And I did this book many, many years ago, so it's been a while, but I went into my storage and I found some of the buildings. They were not meant to last, and they haven't. But this is the pharmacy. And see, there's the little pharmacy sign. And that's sort of a joke, because this story takes place in France. In France, there are a lot of pharmacies. Every little town has a pharmacy, and they have hair brushes and ointments. And I also found, outside of town, this farm, right? But it's... It's just a box that I drew on and I taped paper on. This is just a box as well. And I also found this. It's a little bit falling apart. But it's a little French version of a deli, right? And there it is on the side where people walk by, but it was next to another building, so it's just a box. I built this whole city. I took over my whole studio and built building after building after building for weeks and weeks. And you can't have a building without trees. So that is a big one. And then here's another littler tree. I thought this might be a fun little activity to sort of do because you could draw a tree and tape it on there and cut it maybe with one of the grown-ups in the house or maybe you can use scissors on your own and you could make a village. Ah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And I know what you're asking now. You're saying, Mo, how did Nanette and all of those characters get to walk in that town, get to be part of that town? Well, I drew those characters flat, right? And then I put them together with a computer. So, uh, you wanna come see? Let's go take a look at the original drawings of Nanette from Nanette's Baguette. All right. Here we go. Come on over here. Remember, these were the elephant and piggies. 
Here are some of the pigeon ones. Here's the pigeon needs a bath, right? And then some early drawings of another pigeon story. But we're going to keep going. We're going to go down to, oh, oh, the busy creature's day eating. Time to set there. And Nanette's spaghetti. Open up. Let's see what's in there. So, if you remember a couple days ago, I think I was talking about how I always started with the blue drawings first. And these drawings I drew pretty big. And that was because I knew that I was going to photograph them and they would lose some of their quality when I photographed them. So I labeled everyone and I drew them where I thought they would need to be. There's Nanette petting something. It's another layer. There's the back of Nanette. There's Nanette in the rain. Nanette gets a coin. See something special about that coin? Yeah, that's one of the places that I hid the pigeon. In that coin. And then afterwards, I had to do all these different things, figure out where the characters were, and draw them and color them. There's Nanette having the baguette. This was 2015 in December. There are some of Nanette's friends. Look at that. That was the day after Christmas. And this one I did the day before New Year's Eve. I love working during the holidays because the phone doesn't ring and I can make my art. There's Nanette dreaming of a baguette. And here is Nanette really scared because Nanette ate the whole baguette. And now Nanette is worried. Nanette's gonna have to talk to her mom. And then Nanette is gonna have to be brave which we all have to be sometimes, even when we don't feel like it. Those are the drawings for Nanette's baguette. And I bet you're wondering, if you look at this big drawer, wow, look at all these drawings, and you did the floor of the place, and figuring out the doorknobs, and making the rough sketches. How did you do all that? Well, we'll talk about this on another day, but I have a chart where every single piece of art on every page, I mark to see if I've done it. This is the chart for Nanette's baguette. Did I build the location? Did I make the building? Did I put it together? Have I drawn the sky? Have I photographed it? Have I lit it right? Did I do the rough drawing? Did I put it in together? Did I get it approved? Did I change it and check it? and do the typography, and did I get it approved by my editor again? All these different things. Every time I do one of these little things, I get to check off one of these boxes because it is impossible to make a book. So much work. But it is possible to do one of these little things, and when you do it, you can check it off. Just like sometimes it feels like it's impossible to get through some of the stuff that's going on now, but we just need to check off box by box. And then eventually, hopefully, we've got this beautiful big thing that becomes a story. All right, let's go back because I forgot to show you some of the things. I'm very forgetful later. Come on, we're gonna head back. built these big buildings. That was really fun. But I also got to build these little things. Yeah, let's see this. This is in a tiny scene. In the back of a corner, there's an umbrella stand. It's a French love umbrellas, and it's been raining. We see that it's raining earlier, so I want to have an umbrella stand. And you see that? I snuck in another little pigeon. And in the beginning, when Nanette is very excited about going, Nanette is in the kitchen. And this is the stovetop and the oven in the kitchen. This is the first prop that I built, the very first one, to see if all this other stuff was going to work. And it did. 
And after today's little broadcast, we're gonna put on a short film that's a stop motion film of me very quickly building some of these buildings and building the whole town so you can get a sense of how big that really was. So, maybe you can use this to build a building. Or maybe, if you have one, let's see if you have a toilet paper roll. Why don't we pause? Pause. I said that the sushi go, go run around and see if get a toilet paper roll or a paper roll. Or maybe if you're like me, you have a giant toilet. Go find a giant toilet. Yeah, okay, and I'll get the roll. Right? So we can, you got it? Yeah, okay, I'm still pausing. Oh, okay, play. Because we can use this also just to make characters, right? We can do plays. And sometimes it helps me when I'm writing to think of characters talking and to create dialogues. And so if I have a little puppet, maybe that will help me write. So let's see this. It's going to be a little bird. And do a green beak. There we go. And let's get yellow eyes. Oh, well, the yellow doesn't look very yellow on this toilet paper roll. It looks more brown and grayish. So I guess I learned something about toilet paper rolls. The yellow doesn't work as well. It doesn't matter. See, this is my little bird now, right? Rolly. Hi, my name is Rolly. How are you? And I can put on a little play with Rolly. I like doing that. I like putting on little plays. Matter of fact, I like writing plays. And I wrote a play called Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, the musical, that until very recently was touring all over the country, and I think will be again. And I mention that because in the program that we gave all of the theater goers, there was this special thing. It was these puppets, these finger puppets that you can make. You cut it, they come right out, and then you take a piece of tape, which I have in here, and you wrap it around your finger, all right, and you've got the duck one. Let's see what else. Oh, we also have the bus so that you can play the play, right? Now, let's see how the bus goes. Let me make that one. Yeah. I did a little, a little too fast. I got a little impatient there. Here's the bus. Going by two birds. Here we go. Pigeon at the wheel! Vroom, vroom! Oh no! Don't go over the edge! Whew. That was close. The bus. Oh, yes. And if you remember from the pigeon wants a puppy, it was also this. And I know what you're saying right now. What? Mo, why do you get to play with these and I don't? Well, if you go to the Kennedy Center website, there are these as downloads. Now, they're not in color because you get to color them, and they're not pre-cut like these are, but you can cut them or have someone cut them, and then you have your own little finger puppets that you've created just like this. Oh, one second. I get that tape on. And you can... Make little plays. See, like, oh, hi, I'm the. Oh, I'm in love. I'm so in love. Oh, oh. yeah, there we go. So, all right, there's a little beeping. Don't worry about it. I think there's a truck outside because I am in a studio. It's all fine. All right. Well, now you know how to make props and sets puppets and you can download them and you make your own plays. I really hope that you can do that. 
maybe with a grown-up in your life. That would be fun, too. I like to see grown-ups get silly again. I want the grown-ups out there to get a shameactomy. Be silly again. All right. That was really fun. So, now we've been getting a lot of questions. I've been seeing a lot of drawings online and sent to me. And there are some fantastic drawings. I really appreciate it. I think you guys are doing really creative stuff out there. And so today, I got these questions sent to me, put together for me. Obviously, I can't answer all your questions. A lot of questions are coming through. But we have someone, initial BH6, who says, which book makes him laugh the most? By him, I'm guessing he means me. Which book makes me laugh the most? Whew. I'll be honest, anytime I read a Calvin and Hobbes book, I just start laughing. So probably Calvin and Hobbes makes me laugh the most. When you get an idea for a new character or a series, what do you do first? I celebrate. And how do you get books published? I call my editor. So ask Cree of eight and Gabby age six. Well, for me, I've been publishing books since oh, well before Creed and Gabby were born, and I have an editor. And when I have an idea for a book, or the beginning of an idea for a book, I call up my editor, and I start talking to my editor. Do you think this is a good idea, or how can I make this happen? And I make little sketches, and if my editor thinks it's, a, you know, it's an okay idea, then I continue to work on growing that idea. Which of your characters is the most like you? Whew. This is from Delaney, who is age six in Michigan. Delaney, you, I guess, are going to grow up to be a psychiatrist or a therapist. And when you do, I will pretend that an hour is really 45 to 50 minutes and I will pay you and tell you the answer to that question. All right. Um, Theo, age nine, asks, how do you not need to erase every five seconds? Oh, Theo, that is a great question. Well, I've been drawing a lot. I've been drawing for many, many years. I made many, 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 many drawings. But even so, when I'm sitting at my drawing table and really working, I think I need to erase, not every five seconds, probably more like every four and a half seconds. Remember, an eraser is part of a pencil for a reason, and adding and taking away are both types of drawing. All right. Are you going, I'm sorry, this is Cassidy in Pennsylvania, seven years old. Are you going to make a pigeon book and he gets what he wants? That would be pretty cool. I think that would be pretty cool, don't you? Am I going to make a pigeon book where he gets what he wants? No. In the same way that Charlie Brown is never going to be able to kick that football, the pigeon is never going to get what he wants. Shh, don't tell him. Because I'm kind of a stinker that way with the pigeon. It's a good question. Um, and the reason not is books need drama. If I made a book called Happy Pigeon Gets Everything He Wants in Happy Land, and boy, it's really great, it'd be pretty boring, right? And by the end, you would stop reading that book. Uh, Eli and Spence uh, have a question. Eli would like to know if you have a favorite fish. <laughs> okay. Eli, I do have a favorite fish. His name is Roberto. How did Gerald and Piggy become best friends asks Olive, who's a six-year-old in California, how did Gerald and Piggy become best friends? Uh, Gerald and Piggy met on a farm, and Gerald was working on the farm, and Piggy came from the city as a tourist, and they met each other, and they decided they had a lot of similar interests, and then it turned out uh, that because of rent, that they needed to sort of like get a larger apartment with a bunch of different animals, and then they became very, very good friends. Or maybe there's a better story. I really don't know how they met. Maybe you could write a story of how Elephant and Piggy first met. Because to be honest, when I first met them, they were already best friends. All right. Uh, Charlie is a seven-year-old in Montreal. 
Bonjour, Charlie. Um, how many pigeons are there in the world? Not enough. None. My name is Zach. This is from Zach. <laughs> and I'm in the fifth grade in New Hampshire. I wanted to ask if you, if anyone ever think that you weren't a good artist. Some of my friends don't like my drawings, but I still try my best. Wow, Zach, that's a pretty deep question. Uh, yes, there are a lot of people who didn't think I was a good artist. For many years, certainly when I was growing up, people didn't like my cartoons. Uh, sometimes even teachers thought that cartoons weren't real art. Um, and I knew that if I drew every day, my drawings would get better. I knew my drawings weren't perfect. My drawings aren't perfect now. But every day, after the end of a day of drawing, I feel like I'm that little bit better. And I think when I was your age, it was good to have heroes who drew. So I would look at comic strips in the paper, and I would imitate them, and I would draw in their style just to see how they did what they did. And over time, all of those things developed into what is called a style, so that I could draw in the way that I draw. Zach, uh, you are 10. I look forward to a day when I can see one of your drawings in a book in a bookstore. All right. And now, dear Mr. Mo, uh, this is from Luke, Eliza, and Anna, New York. Does Pigeon have any friends or family? Yes, the Pigeon has lots of friends. I hope you are one of the Pigeon's friends. And the Pigeon has family. It's the duckling. The duckling is family. All right, those were wonderful questions. Thank you for them. Oops. I'm going to put these things down. All right. We're talking about building today. We're talking about not just illustrating, but finding boxes. And I, I suspect there are going to be a lot more boxes in your life over time. And taking paper and taping on them and making buildings and making sets and characters with paper. So I thought for today's doodle, I want to make impossible buildings. Buildings that look like buildings as a drawing, but could never really exist. So, let's see what we do. All right, let's doodle together. So this is a house with big hairy legs. That is a hairy legged house. And a bird in the living room, fancy hair. And bear claws for arms. That looks like an impossible house. I wonder what your impossible house looks like. Well, let me just write my name. So if I come across this drawing again, I can remember who made it. And I've forgotten the last couple days, but I'm going to stamp this so I can remember when I made it. And that is 
my impossible house. You hold up your impossible house? Oh yeah, that house is barely possible. Matter of fact, I would say that some of these houses I'm looking at now are completely impossible houses. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for visiting today. I hope that you enjoy the little clip that's gonna come afterwards. And I hope that you'll start building and making and creating little, maybe not so little, houses and stores. And you can turn that into a set for a play. And then you can take some of your puppets and make a little story. All right, this is Mo Willem saying, I'll see you tomorrow. Le dimanche matin, on change de décor au puce de Saint-Ouen, la course au trésor. À nous la broc dans le bric à brac, on fouine et on craque pour des trucs en toc. Le marché au plus, porte pignon court, c'est tant et tant et plus, le tour de détour. Marché malique vers les onze serpettes, on cherche le bonheur du jour. Au plus de Saint-Ouen, au plus de Saint-Ouen, au plus de Saint-Ouen, au plus de Saint-Ouen. Au plus de Saint-Ouen.